We finally had the life-changing encounter we've been waiting to have since we were kids. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Make sure you go over to our main channel and check out the latest release, the sequel to Christmas Sweats, Christmas Face. It's amazing, I promise. I think it is, I'm pretty proud of it. Question, if you had the power and the means to meet anybody on earth, any living person on the face of the earth, maybe someone you've always dreamed of meeting for your entire life, would you have an answer? Yes. Do you, do you have that person yeah. in mind? Do you have mm -hmm. that hero that you've always wanted to meet? Yep. Well. That answer for us has always been easy. Since very young age, I mean, since high school. Middle we, school. Middle school? Yeah, I found the tape in eighth grade. That was when I found my dad's tape, played it for you, and then it's been a love affair ever since. From that moment, our lives were changed, and the answer to that question was easy for us. The answer is country music legend, artist extraordinaire, Merle, Merle Haggard. Haggard. Now you may real, you may remember from last week's episode. I think it was it was Tuesday's episode. Um, we discussed meeting a we, celebrity. Yeah, we talked about meeting celebrities. Dynamics of that. And I said that Merle Haggard was one of the only people I would actually go up and talk to. Right. Um, we, this guy is definitely an idol. We were talking uh, last night about how we used to just drive around in a car playing his albums for hours, not even speaking to yeah. each other, just listening to it. It was like being in a in a country music meditative state. A Merle Hayes. And then at the next few hours, we would discuss in detail the songs. And when you do that, you form a connection, a bond with the artist. We mm -hmm. formed a bond with Merle that from that moment, going through the rest of our lives, all stages, which we went, we've gone through so much together, puberty. Merle was always there with us. I just said puberty. Musically. Yeah, he, definitely in puberty. I, I could not have made it through puberty without Merle Haggard. Merle Haggard was the key to, for, to us making it through puberty. And so properly. we've always we've always thought about what what if what if we could meet him? What if we could meet him? You know, um, we've been to a number of concerts. We once followed his when we were sixteen. I, I just got my license. We followed him from After North show. Carolina. From a North Carolina concert into South Carolina, I followed his tour bus, and we were like, "He's got to stop for gas or a meal or something." Eventually, but then we realized we had crossed the state border as sixteen-year-olds, and we got scared. We turned back. We it's like out. that, like that's illegal or something. <laughs> we we're like, "Oh, we're in South Carolina." I think the it's the, late. The fumes from the bus were coming in the truck, and it was it was poisoning us slowly. Okay, so that's to set the stage that this guy is just a hero of ours. We've always wanted to meet him, and it's never been able to work out. Uh, well, that very night, after that episode of Good Mythical Morning last week, we went uh, over to Link's house that night. Our families were getting together. Hanging out with our wives, and they said, we, we have a, a present for you. They brought out two little gift bags, and they, and, and they, uh, they, they started filming us, opened them up, and we took these little packages out of the gift bags, tickets to a Merle Haggard concert, for the next night. We were like, whoa, we didn't even know he was in town. It's uh, at the Sabin Theater in Beverly Hills. And to tell a, a, a little por a portion of this story, make a long portion of this story short, they had gone through our management company, which has some connections in Nashville. The collective. To, to get in touch with Merle's booking agent. So not only did we have tickets to the Merle Haggard the concert. The strings were being pulled we, from LA to Nashville. We had the cell phone number to Merle's booking agent, Lance. And so we're like, okay, immediately I feel like I've got to go diarrhea. <laughs> because I mean, my stomach, I immediately get nervous. I looked, and it's like, I this is at, so much more real. I looked than, at Rhett when he started uh, to realize that we were going to get to meet Merle Haggard. And there were tears in his eyes. I, I began like crying. Sincere. I began crying. He I'm started not crying. I'm not ashamed of it. And I was just so uh, yeah. I felt sick. I couldn't go to sleep that night. We were thinking, oh my god, th this is happening. After all these years of talking about, it, it's finally happening. Get up the next day. Pick you up. We're going to work. It's just like pale faced. Just. Nervousness. Yeah, the whole the day I was uneasy. I just a four, wreck. Four or five times. Just that a day. total wreck. 
we ca- we call Lance the booking agent. He doesn't answer the phone. We're like, D- don't leave a voicemail. We'll just call back later. Yeah. And then we call back later, and he doesn't answer. We leave another voicemail. An awkward voicemail. I don't know what I said. He probably yeah. thought I was on drugs or something. And then we finally get him on the phone, and he says, "Okay, just you know, just call me when you're there, and I'll meet up with you." And uh, we'll go from there. We're like, thank you so much for getting us on the meet and greet. He said, well, there's not actually a meet and greet. It's just I can kind of, on his way to stage, I can get you to meet Merle. Right, so we're like, okay, so we're gonna have an opportunity to meet Merle on his way to stage. Now this may not be the fairy tale, uh, you know, meeting that we've always envisioned because he's gonna be going it's not gonna up be on sit, stage. sitting it's down for hours. Quick. Okay, so anyway, the concert is at eight. We get there at 6.30, we call Lance. We're like, we're here. And uh, he's like, oh, okay. Uh, and I'm like, well, we can grab a bite to eat if you. Yeah, you, he was you, like, you he was boys, like, go he was ahead. Like, what time is the show? We were like eight. He was like, uh, well, you guys just go get something. Yeah, to go eat. grab something to eat and uh, <laughs> come back when you're done. So we go and we went to McDonald's, not just because I really like the McRib and yes, I did get one. Um, <laughs> but you, you don't want to be in the middle of a big meal when yeah. all of a sudden you get the call from Merle to come you back. You want to be able to drop that McRib, throw it over moment, your shoulder, and get back to the get concert. Get out of there. So um, he never called. <laughs> and then so and then we just drove back over there and we go into the lobby and then we call him. We're like, we're here. And it was still pretty early. Right. <laughs> He's like, we're calling him. He's, He's like, like, okay. You guys are calling back again. They, wow. So then he says, okay, will you guys come out to the tour bus? And I'm like, He's asking us to come to the tour bus. And he says, And I had like records. Now we've got like this record collection on the wall in our office. Well, but let me, hold on. And a second. I had records. I'm like, oh, we have records. Right. But he, he said, come out to the tour bus. And I'm yeah. thinking, we're going to get on the tour bus. He says, immediately yeah. follows that up with, I'll meet you outside of the tour bus. So okay, we're not getting on the tour bus. Yeah. So, but he does say on the phone as we're about to walk out, he says, um, "Yeah, we've been in here watching your videos on the tour bus." Merle says, "I know those boys." What? I he knows us boys. Now I continue to question whether or not Merle actually knows who we are. He might think we're like the Flight of the Concords or something. Yeah, there might be some confusion here. Because he's a huge here. fan of them. I, I mean, right? I don't know, but. That's the rumor has it he knows those boys. I don't know how. Move on to the next portion of the story. We go out to the tour bus. Yeah. Link brings the albums um, for Lance. Lance comes out. And we're, we're talking to him for a while, just kind of small talk and what, just kind of telling him how, how much of fans we are. And he's starting to get an understanding. Okay. Well, I can take the albums right now and get them signed. And that way, when he's coming out of the tour bus later, I was like, yeah, 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 let's go ahead and get the album signed. That way we can concentrate on getting a picture later and you know, talking to him. We don't have to worry about any signatures. That's great. So I, I give him give him the albums. And, and he then- gives us these little wristbands. He's like, after the opening act, you guys can come back out here. And in between the tour bus and you know the stage out here, you guys can, can meet Merle. So we go back in, we watch the opening act. We, we got our wristbands on, we go back out, we go past the rope. Uh, there's a rope in between the tour bus and the stage door, and then there's a rope on the other side. And there's a little pocket of fans on each side of the And a the security sidewalk. guard there. Sur- security they guard. see our bands, we're able to go through the rope and stand in the middle. And you know we see there, okay, here's the stage entrance. This is gonna be a good place. There's lighting here, be a good, taste, good place to take a picture. There's people on the other side of the rope. A guy comes over and he's like, can you guys be here? We're like, yeah, we got these. He's like, man. And then he like stomps back. We're the only the people rope. with the wristbands. Yeah, so it's like, okay, we're in the perfect spot. Lance comes out there, we're talking to him. He's like, you want to use my camera to take the yeah. picture? Or do you want to use your camera? It's like, well, we'll use our camera and we'll like face this direction. You know, you got it. It's a limited window of opportunity here. Everything has to be exactly right. And okay. it was. So then uh, some time passes. Uh, real quickly, Ben Haggard. Merle Haggard's son, he comes out of the tour bus. He he comes by. We're, we we recognize him. Ben. He's hey, like, "Hey Ben, I he, want to meet you." He's like, "Oh, hey guys. We've been watching your we've been watching your videos on the tour bus." We're like, "They've been watching our videos on the like, tour bus." He's like, "Hey, we're huge fans." Um and then he's like, "Well, we, we love we love your dad. Good to see you. Guy, I got to go play. I'm in the band." And can, so he goes and Can can he be our dad? He goes to the stage door. Another few minutes pass and then all of a sudden, I I'm looking at Link and right over Link's shoulder is a tour bus. And I'm it's looking like at this Rhett. Iconic door of the tour bus. And I'm just waiting to open and then <gasps> Rhett's eyes get big. It opens and then <laughs> here he comes, dressed all in black, 
Merle Haggard has stepped out of the tour bus and he begins to mosey. That's the best way to describe the way he walks now that he's 76. Yeah. He begins to mosey down the sidewalk. And there's two women, he stops and talks to them. I was like, okay, well, after he talks to the women, we're next. Then he starts walking towards us. We're trying to play it cool. I don't, I'm not gonna run up to him and like take a knee or anything. I'm trying not to cry. Even though I thought about it. And he's, he's walking up to us, walking up to us, walking up to us, walking past us, walking past us, walking past us. Just keeps going down the sidewalk. Keeps going. Lance turns to us, he says, oh, he's, he's gonna go, he's gonna go meet those people, the other fans on the other side of that rope right. over there. It's, like, it's cool, you know, he's cool, he does this kind of thing. He's, he's a man of the people, he yeah. likes to talk to people out there, even though they're behind ropes. We're like, okay, that's cool. And, and then Lance, in the middle of like, explaining that to us, he's like, looks up and he's like, hold on, Merle's gone. And then Lance takes off around the corner. And so then I look at Rhett and we're like, start chasing Lance and he goes in another entrance. There's another entrance to the backstage. Merle has gone in another stage door. So we go, Lance goes in, Rhett goes in, I go in, door shuts. Totally black. Except I can't, we can't can, see anything. It's totally black, but we can see the band actually playing on stage because we're basically backstage, and and that's and the only I mean, light. And they're already playing the first song, waiting for Merle to come on, like ding, 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 you know, waiting for him to come out on stage. And it's like we've we've missed it. We have missed our hero. And then I hear Lance say, "Merle, hold, hold on a second. I got I got two guys I want you to meet." And then my eyes kind of adjust, and I realize. Merle is like three feet in front of me. I can see like a little bit of a silhouette. He's dressed in black in the dark, it was amazing. And then he, so then Rhett and I get on either side of him and Lance takes Rhett's camera and he's like, okay, let's take a photo. And we're like, no flash. So this, right. is, so this is our first picture of us and Merle Haggard that we ever took together. Not a lot of detail in it. And we're like, D -d -d you, you, gotta, you gotta turn on the flash. And I turn to Merle, and he's this close to me. I can and smell I, his breath. And I have my it was sweet. I have my hand on his back, and I I'm thinking. I, well, I, I I actually say I say, is this really you? Because I can't see you. And he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he laughed. Yeah, a little <laughs> your little Merle laugh. It was great. And then. Uh, the camera flashes, and out of the corner of my eye, I see him, and I turn, and I He's say, right there in the periphery. It is you! And he, he didn't say anything at that point. I had my hand on the small of his back. I had my hand, like, right up here, on the top of his back. Yeah. And it was soft. It, it was. It was a little soft. In a good way. Yeah. It, it, was, it was pleasant. And then, then he, next thing I knew, he was on stage performing his song, and we were standing there backstage watching him. We're like, that's it. I met a shadow of Merle Haggard. I I saw him for a split second. But it, it, this is the way I thought about it. We didn't get a chance to really discuss anything with Merle. He may not even know that he met us. It's like meeting a wax figure in the dark. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like if I had have met him uh, in normal circumstances, like in the light, like where you could have a conversation, yeah, I like, feel like I just would have made a fool of myself. I like on a couch or something? I would have cried, I would have said something right. stupid. So meeting him in the dark and only seeing him out of the periphery in a f camera flash, I believe is the it, best case scenario. It preserved the mystery of it. It preserved the in the intrigue and the, the mystique is the word I'm looking for. It preserved the mystique. Then we go out and we watch the rest of the show uh, from the second row. Um, had an amazing time. It, yeah. was, it was great. I've, I've got the I've got the records here. He signed this one. It's personalized to and Link. Yep, I think Rhett's in there somewhere. Yeah, it's, hey. my name's difficult. It's difficult to write. It's difficult to spell. To and Link. There we go. It's good enough. It's got, better than better than good. It's great. Got a few more here. Life changing experience. Uh, we want to thank our wives for doing this for us. I mean, because they were the ones who, sweet, who hatched this wives. plan. And we want to thank the collective for pulling some strings. And of course, we want to thank Merle Haggard for signing on my on this album here and for giving us the opportunity to meet him in the dark. Hopefully one day we'll get to meet him in the light, maybe have a conversation, work on a project together. Merle, you hear us, that's right. Let's work on something together. Or, or just uh, touch his back in just a friendly way again. Yep. <laughs> you know what time it is. I'm Robert. And I'm Rose. 
and we're the former residents of Merle Haggard in Ridgecrest, California. It's, it's time, time to, to spin, spin the, the wheel, wheel of, of mythicality. mythicality. Thanks to everybody who participated in the 12 mythical days of Christmas. We are announcing our overall winner and receiver of all 12 prizes today on Facebook.com slash Rhett and Link. Go over there. Also, go check out Christmas Face, the latest Christmas video, the sequel to Christmas Sweats. Rhett is old Link from the future here to warn Link. Weird, okay. Rhett, Rhett. What, what? You're gonna have a What's tough, up? You're gonna have a tough time believing this. I know, okay. I know I look like Rhett, but it, okay. In the future, when the singularity happens, and we have the ability to take people's brains or minds and input them into another body. Is this a science lesson or? No, 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 just be quiet. We don't have much time. We came up with a, a, some bet. This is on an episode of GMM in the year 2050, where we were like, oh, let's do this thing where we switch bodies. We're still doing GMM in the year 2050? Yeah, it's bigger than ever. Uh, it just is injected directly into people's brains th through a syringe. Weird, there's no internet. Sounds but, painful. But that's another conversation. Listen. I would never have a syringe I'm in my you, brain. Babe, I'm you. You said, hey, I'll be in your body for a day. I got in your body for a day. I did something really stupid in your body. You're dead. I'm you. Weird, I know. I'm dead? Your body's dead. Your mind is in Rhett's body. I am you. I haven't aged because of some other technology. Listen, all you need to know is that day when I suggest that we should switch bodies, resist me. Do not do it. Because, because it will, it will kill you? Because I don't like being this tall, man. I've hit my head on everything. I would it really sucks. But you're trying to protect Rhett? I'm trying to protect me because Rhett was inside my body and died. Your body, I'm you, gah! I kind of feel like we should always be blindfolded when we're around him. Yeah, or it, you know should, what I mean? be, it should be t total darkness. It, we, we should only work with Merle in total darkness. darkness.